HTS. I'm Jasmine Urbina here in the studio today with my co-host and my dad, Alex Urbina. And today we're going to be talking about our relationship and the things that we want to request from each other, things that we need from each other. And if you're listening or you're on Facebook Live, jump on and maybe we can address some of the things that you want to address to your kids and say, hey, you know what? I'd like to request this from you. And we're going to go ahead and explain what that means. Um, For me, requests mean, which I learned this from my dad, so it might be the same definition as what it means to you. But um, for me, a request means kind of uh, me asking of you or what can I do for you, what you can do for me kind of thing. Yeah, I think that, you know, when you use the word request, it is a symbol to let the other person know that I honor your opinion. I honor your thoughts. I appreciate your input. And, um, it just lets the other person know that they're important and what they have to say matters. And I think it's just a powerful come from is when we can use, uh, the word and stand behind the word I'm requesting of you rather than you should do this or why aren't you doing that? It's just a more powerful, uh, context to operate from, I think in relationships. Yeah. And I'm the first person to jump on somebody when they say you should do this or you should do that. Be because I don't like it. (laughs) So I'm not afraid to say, oh, really, I should do that. (laughs) I I think you get when you operate from you should be doing this or why aren't you doing that? I think you're more likely to get a reaction from the other person. And when you want to be in a relationship, you don't want people to be in reaction in relationships. You want people to be proactive. You want them to hear you and not be tagged, or you want them to uh, hear your conversation or hear your talk. And you want them to be freed up to be proactive in that conversation rather than being reactive in resistance and giving pushback. So you got to remember that the words you use are important in, in conversations, especially in your relationships. So I think it'd be a good idea for us to start off with maybe things that I request of you, things you request of me, and also too going back in our past as me as a teenager and as a kid, maybe some of the requests that I gave to you and and how I got that from you. Okay, sounds good. Um, can I start? Yeah, of course. So I wrote down a few things before the show. I just kind of did a little self-reflection. I was thinking about what are some of the requests that I have from you, and you probably heard them before, but I think that... It helps to always revisit them and go over them again and and also gives me an opportunity to express them to you again. And because sometimes by constantly doing a check in and reminding myself what is the needs that I have from you and what are some of the requests that I have of you, it helps me get. Uh, centered and grounded about what what it is that I'm asking of you. And and by me practicing that every couple months, it helps me say it in a different way or helps me get clarity of maybe of what I really am looking for from you. So one of the things that I wrote down was that I need you to trust that I want the absolute best for you. And my request of you is that when I offer advice or share my insight, that you know that it's coming from a place of 150% wanting you to win. And what the reason why I'm asking that and requesting that that you hear it like that is because what I don't want you to do is hear it from a place of that I don't believe you can handle your circumstances or that I doubt you. I need you to hear that when I'm sharing, it's I'm sharing because I'm sharing from being a part of your team. I'm your teammate. I'm, I'm your champion. I'm your biggest cheerleader. And so I need you to hear what I'm saying when I'm contributing. I need you to see it as a contribution. I need you to see it as a gift. I want you, and I'm requesting of you that you hear that when I'm giving any kind of input that it's coming from 150% from my heart and really championing you and wanting you to win so bad, probably more than you want to win for yourself. And I think as a a parent, communicating that with your kid, at least for me, when you would communicate stuff like that to me, I it was a lot easier for me to understand why you do what you do. And you always say like, we're generation Y, like we need to know why. So if if there's nothing else behind your reasoning and your logic, other than because I'm your parent and because I say so that to us, even though you want it to be good enough, it's not, I don't think that in my experience, in a, you know, to be an effective parent, I don't think that type of parenting is going to help anymore. I think it was probably really great back then. We always say this, but now all you have to do is tell your kids why, or the best explanation 
explanation of why that you can. It doesn't have to be perfect, but as long as you're trying, we can tell. Some of us, Generation X and baby boomers, we suffer from the because I said so phase <laughs> of our parenting. And when we grew up, we constantly heard our parents you know, either be frustrated in their parenting um, role or as frustrated in their life of maybe trying to provide or um, and they just didn't have the patience to explain why or they didn't want to explain it or they didn't feel like they had to. So they got used to parenting from the because I said so. And so we heard that growing up and we've tried it with our kids. We've tried it with the generation Y. There's a reason why you're called generation Y is because you need to know why you, it's not good enough to just, you know, fall back on because I said so. And what's amazing is that what I'm finding out with the millennials is if you actually take the time to explain them why they go, Oh, okay. I get it. And then all of a sudden they're off on that road and you've course corrected that just because you had the patience to sit down and explain to them fully of what the benefits were of what your request was. Yeah. And it's not, it's in all relationships, not just a parent, parent child relationship. When I go to work, if my boss explains to me why she wants something done or he wants something done, I get it done a lot more effectively, a lot more, you know, time saving everything. It just is better when I know why and I can plan it out. And it might be a personality trait for me. So not every kid and not every uh, millennial is the same, but if it's showing up as a pattern, then you have to it's assume or it's safe to assume, you know, play it safe, give them more information than they need. Here's another thing that I'm looking at. If, if let's say you're, I'm giving you requests and we're interacting with each other. Let's say you're still 16 years old and uh, you know we're in a relationship and I'm wondering why you're not completing some of the tasks or some of the requests that I've asked of you. At a certain point, I got to stop and ask myself, what's missing for me that you aren't getting it, right? Like the you, you haven't flipped the light switch to go, oh, okay, dad, I get it. You need me at this certain time or you're requesting my help because you don't have anyone else or like it, the, the light switch hasn't flipped on for you. So I have to look at myself and say, what's missing for me? Maybe I haven't really fully explained to her how important she is in this uh, circumstance or she hasn't really got how important the role is and how, how much I really need her in this moment. So maybe I need to spend a little bit more time explaining how important she is or how important the role is that I've asked of her. And then once I can do that and you get it and your eyes light up and you go, Oh my God, I'm going to, I get to be there for my dad. He really needs me. Then, then it's like smooth sailing. Once that light switch flips for you, then I got you on board my team and, and you're doing the little extra things I haven't at, needed to ask you to do. And I think that's a great way to really create a relationship. Yeah. And uh, for me, and this is a good idea for a request too, is I, I guess I would like to request from you to explain that stuff to me because I, you know, you told me thing, you know, things like that when I was 16 and I'm 20 now, 21 now. And all these years later, I still can't see it sometimes, you know, sometimes it just seems like a burden or sometimes it seems like an obligation instead of an honor or a gift. And even though I know that I ask of you to re- just keep reminding me okay. because I, I forget sometimes. <laughs> all right. No. I, and, and again, you know, it's, I'm glad that you're sharing that because, you know, when I'm, when I am unconscious, I just, to me, it's almost like, you know, the parents always say, well, you should know that, you know, or isn't it a give? Isn't it obvious that I need help if I'm asking you that I really need help? And no, it's not. It's not obvious to you. And I have to remind myself that I get to be the person to communicate how important it really is to me and how, it, how much it really means to me that if you can be there for me at that time. Yeah, and I don't know if this is a middle child thing, <laughs> but I've noticed a lot in in that in the sense that if, if you're a parent and you have your go-to kid, they don't see it that way. We don't see it. Yeah. You're my go-to kid. In case and I don't see, it. and sometimes <laughs> I don't see that. And I'm a little bit more conscious than, uh, you know, you know, your 16 year old. So your 16 year old sees why is mom always asking me, go ask my brother, go ask my older brother, ask my older sister, you know, but it's not about age. It's about who your kid is. And I should, what if I created a, what if I bought you a trophy, like a, 
three foot big trophy that said my go to kid, and I had a ceremony, and and I don't have a problem doing that if I honored you and said you're it, you're the one that I for some reason you just get it, you we think alike, I trust you, you have integrity, uh, you're responsible, you know, you're you're accountable, and so you're that person for me that I can just turn to and say hey I, I need you because I trust you and. It, would that symbol mean anything to you if you put it in your room and, and that way reminded you that every time I ask of you, it's not because um, it's the easiest. It's not because, you know, I want to pick on you. It's, it really genuinely is because, you know, I'm honored to to know that out of all three of my kids, you have proven yourself to be the person I can really lean on. That's a good idea. I understand the, the symbolism of it, but I think sometimes just for a kid is just being told, Hey, I'm being honest. I'm not trying to pick on you. You are my go-to kid. You're my, whatever that looks like for you. And not just tell them once, keep reminding them. Because maybe I need forget. the trophy. Maybe I need to put it, create one and put it in my room to remind myself to explain it to you. Right. Yeah. Whatever. To be able to effectively communicate that. To you. Right. 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 Whatever your version of that symbol looks like to somebody else who's listening, whatever you're imagining when he said that, do that. Okay, cool. You have any requests for me, or do you want me to shoot down all my? Uh, list? I can. We can take turns. I have one. My my number one is, and I feel like you you do this for the most part, but sometimes I, I think you forget. But, I need reminders. Um. So my reminder request of you is to not take things personally. We talk about this all the time because I love you and I love when you come to my room and you bug me and I love when you, you know, you're trying to love me and give me attention and be affectionate. But sometimes I'm so busy or sometimes I'm really overwhelmed with things that your affection, your love and all the things that you're trying to do are annoying. (laughs) So just understand that I'm not doing it on purpose. I know every kid probably does it. And, and I just request from you, to not take it personally because I love you. And I love when you do those things. Even after I'm annoyed, I end up thinking, oh, that's my dad. I love him. So timing's important is what I'm hearing you say that, um, you know, and that your time that you need by yourself in that moment, it has nothing to do with me. It has to do with something that you need, like a, you need space or you need, just need a timeout or to collect your thoughts. And for me not to feel rejected or interpret it as, you know, you're, you're pushing me away and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I think it's really easy to take things personally, even, you know, at work and it, with anybody you feel rejected or, I mean, I know I've, I can say it from the eye perspective. I feel rejected when I go into your room and I want to talk to you about something, but you're busy and you're on the computer and I don't have a hundred percent of your attention, but I need to understand that, you know, when I walk into a room, you're not, you know, expected to drop everything. And if we could have that same understanding and remind each other that that's important, then I don't think, I don't see us having any issue down the line. With awesome. That. I love it. So request, consider that request accepted and uh, my commitment to practice on that one. So here's another one I wrote down is that I need, my request of you is for you to know that I believe you to be more powerful and capable than you probably think you are. And that you're enough to handle your own circumstances. So a lot of times when I don't get involved, when you're struggling, I need you to know that I'm conscious and aware of me choosing not to jump in and save you because I believe that you can handle your circumstances. And I want to give you that space to struggle so that you can decide uh, to go down deep inside your own emotional and mental bag of tricks to pull out all the tools you need to overcome whatever challenge you're facing. But always know that I'm right there ready to put my hand down and pull you out of the quicksand. Just know I'm right there over your shoulder watching, but I'm purposely not jumping in to save you. And and that's something that I need you to understand. And my request of you is to trust that in those moments, I'm always there for you, but I'm not going to jump in because I believe that you can handle stuff. Yeah. I, th- I think um, probably of all your list of requests, and I don't know them yet, but I think that one's the one that I always remember. I'm always reminded of, uh, especially just doing the show every week, I feel like we talk about, you know, you not enabling and you letting us do our own thing. And, um, as an adult now, I'm so grateful that I had to go through those things and those struggles. And I had to have those, you know, go storm in my room and be upset because dad won't help me. You know, I'm glad that I had those because now I know 
that I'm only going to ask you when I really need something. And I guess a request for me is that if I do come to you for something, it's because I really, really need it. So maybe think twice before you say no. I don't know if you think I come to you a lot, but I don't personally think that I am always like, dad, I need this and this and this. So when I do come to you, it's because I, I, you're my last resource. <laughs> okay. All right. So you turn, you accept my request Yes. and then you kind of turned it and gave me a request back. Yeah. Just knowing, I guess for me, just knowing that you're, I have a lot of tools in my belt and you're in there. You're already just, okay. you, your being is a tool, but I go to it as a last tool because I, sometimes I think, oh, I can do this. And the one I realize I can't, it's like, well, Maybe I can, but I need somebody to help me. And, and I think that you. I think that in that moment, it'll, it'll open up a great opportunity for me, for both of us to communicate in that moment and say, hey, is this one of those times that, that you're asking me because you've tried everything and you really need me? So I'll be more mindful of, of that in those moments and try to remember that you're, if you're, like you said, this moment where you're telling me, hey, if I come to you, it's because I've tried everything. And, that, and now I'm saying, here's my hand. Mr. Stand by the quicksand, pull me out now. Type yeah. Of thing. All right, yeah. cool. And I'm sure there's some middle ground in there. We're going to, you know, we're going to try to f- feel the moment out and find out what's that, that middle area. Yeah. And uh, for me, I've always n- known that I was not going to go to you as a last resort or if I really, really needed you. But now that I've said it out loud, I'm obligated to, to do that. So That's if right. I want to come to you for it's now you holding yourself accountable to. Yeah. It. Yeah. All right. My next request to you is, um, to be patient with me as I practice figuring out how to, um, how to figure out what it is that you need from me in each interaction. So, um, you know, and just like in all my relationships, even my relationship with your mom, I'm always trying to figure out in the moment. And I'm asking myself from a mindful place of what is it that she needs for me? What is it that I can contribute to this relationship? So I'm still trying to figure out what you necessarily need for me in each new moment. Um, not only to support you in a way that really helps you figure out who you are, but also figuring out what you need from me uh, because you can't figure it out for yourself. And so I guess this part of the request is a little piggyback off the the request just before that, but just to have the patience. So practice being more patient as I try to figure that out, because I do take responsibility for for being that for you. And I'm not going to sit there and blame you and make you try to figure that out because you're only 21 years old. But for me, uh, I'm giving myself the credit to say, well, I'm 45 years old. I should be the more evolved one. I should be the one that takes responsibility for that side and, and not blaming and pointing fingers and being the victim to you. So I'm asking you is to be patient with me as I try to find what that learning curve is. Yeah. And for me, when I imagine, I guess us getting older and you being, you know, an old grandpa and, you know, they, they say that the old, you know, the elderly, you have to be patient with them and everything. And, but I imagine you still working on yourself and still growing as much as you can. And for me, that's, that it's easier. It's easier to be patient with, with someone who's willing to accept and willing to listen versus that old style of, well, I'm your elder, so respect me, you know, kind of thing. You know, when you said that, when you said the word grandpa, I thought to myself, you know, if I'm going to need you at some point in my life when I get old and I need to be taken care of, then and I'm going to need you to be patient for me, then I need to be patient to you to teach you what patience looks like. Um, and you find a lot of times like on Facebook or, you know, people on social media will post, you know, little, um, little stories where you have the old guy sitting with his inpatient son his you know, 30 year old son. And, and, um, whether he's, he's, you know, the, the, the grandfather or the, the older dad is, you know, really kind of, uh, disenchanted because his son doesn't have the patience for him. And then he tells the kid a story uh, reminding him when he was little about all the times that he had to be patient for him. It's kind of that moment where you just realize like, wow, like I really need to be the example for you to show you what patience looks like so that you learn that. And then, um, and then reciprocate it back to me later on when I'm going to need you to really be patient for me. Yeah. And I guess to go off of that one, I want to be able to, to let you request from me, Hey, can you be patient or, or can you do this for me? And I don't want to have to have us 
be old and, and you say, well, I did this for you. You know, I don't want it to get to that point. Yeah. I want to be able to want to do it for you. And I think, um, you know, I could see us avoiding that just by constantly checking in with each other and addressing these requests. It's funny because we don't talk like that at home. We don't ask each other, hey, will you be patient? But it's a great practice to start. And so I'm going to make that a commitment to start practice asking that kind of request from me. Awesome. We have to take a break. Stay tuned for more of My Conscious Dad right here on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS.